Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. If you're excited to be in the house of worship, I dare you stand up on your feet and give God some praise in the house. Come on, come on, y'all too quiet in here. Come on and give God some praise in the house. Come on, lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. That God be good to you. Come on, come on, I can't hear that God be good to you. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Come on, take this one out of here. Oh God, we ask that you bless the service on today, God. We welcome you in, God. Oh God, just move by your spirit. God, overflow us, God, with your love and kindness, God. Oh God, the people that's represented here today, God, we ask that you be with them. Bless them, God. God bless them as they go, God. Bless them as they come. Oh God, the musicians, God, bless them. Oh God, the praise team, God, bless them. Oh God, the speaker, the bishop of this house, God, bless them, God. Oh God, give us a listening ear to your word, God. You alone is worthy of all the praise, God. So now we came to give you glory, God. For you are good, God, and you are worthy to be first. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thy self they come for me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy. Y'all should be clapping. Surely goodness and mercy shall flow in all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now we're going to turn it over to our praise team. Let's receive them by saying amen. Amen. Morning. Oh, 
something. I believe God is going to pour out in somebody in this place. I believe he's going to pour out. How many know when God pour out, it's not for you to keep it in. Your experiences, they're not for you to keep them in, but they're for you to tell somebody so they may be able to make it out of what they're going through. How many, how many in here God have poured into you? He's poured into you. Now, now you may not have understood that it was God pouring into you. Because you saw it as trouble. Mm. Oh my God, hallelujah. You, you saw it as a setback. You saw it as a pain. You saw it as a disruption of your life. But what God was really doing was pouring into you character. I wish I had some help in this place. He was pouring some stuff into you. Why? Because for one, he knew you could handle it. Come on, give God some praise. He knew you could handle it, but he was pouring into you. And two, he knew that once he poured into you, you wouldn't keep it to yourself, but you would tell somebody what God has done for you. I wish I had some help in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And three, he knew that you would be happy. Hallelujah. Because he brought you out. Hallelujah. Ask somebody, where's your joy? Where's your joy? I don't know where I'm going with that. But I wanted to just say that God poured into us. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 to 29. I'm so glad to be back in the pulpit. It says, he rose up that night and took his two wives, hallelujah, and his two women servants. That's too many women right there. My God. Touch <laughs> somebody, that's too much, that's too much. One is enough, three, 
<laughs> his two women servants. Hallelujah. And he took them and sent them over the brook. And sent them over and he, he had his children and all of his possessions and sent it over. And Jacob was left alone there and he wrestled with a man until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I would not let you go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name should be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince have thou power with God and with man and have prevailed. Will you indulge me for a few minutes as I preach from this topic? You got to fight for this. You got to fight for this. You got to fight. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to fight to keep your mind. You got to fight to keep your joy. You got to fight to keep your peace. You got to, come on, y'all, somebody act like you don't tell them you got to fight for this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. We give you praise. We give you glory, God. Lord, I ask that you would move in this house. Move us out of the way, God. And God, as we sit down, you stand up, Lord. As we shut up, you speak, God, in this house. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bind every spirit of the enemy that is not like you, God. Lord, we just cast the devil out right now. Every depression spirit, every spirit, God, that's in here to hinder, we come against you right now. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, can we all shout amen as we take our seat. Hallelujah. Fighting might sound like a strange thing to talk about as a Christian. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible mentions fighting over 100 times in the Bible. In fact, in 1 Timothy 6, 12, Paul tells Timothy, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to fight. He said, fight the good fight of faith. And then Paul picks it up in 2 Timothy 4, 7. He says, I fought a good fight. Oh, y'all didn't hear me right there. He said, I fought a good fight. I want every person in this room that is in a fight today, that is going through something today, to tell that devil, come on here, here tell that devil, say, devil, you can try me if you want to, but it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good fight. I'm going to put up a good fight. You can try to take my joy. You can try to take my peace. You can try to uh, mess with my family. You can try to mess with my money. The devil, I came to tell you today that this is going to be a good fight, baby. It ain't going to go the way you think it's going to go. It's going to be a good fight. High five somebody and say, that's for me. That's for me because I, all I needed was permission. You know how we are. Some of us, all we need is permission. Tap your neighbor and say, all I needed was permission, permission. And you know, all we need is somebody to just throw some gasoline on it, and we're ready to go. But how many know that there's some mothers in here that won't stand for the devil to mess with their children? There's some mothers in here that are praying for their children. Come on, all the mothers should have made some noise right there. You know, you know, if Becky Sue across the, uh, the hall and, and, and Bill and A, if her kids mess with your kids and, and, and you tell her kids to leave your kids alone, I'm going to preach right when you can understand it. And, and, and she say something out the window about she says, uh, oh, uh, come on to hear somebody. I know you're not messing with my kids. You're ready to put a fight up. Come on, somebody. There are some things that you're going to have to fight for. If you're going to have peace in God, you got to be willing to put up a fight. The problem with some of us is we begin to just lay down. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can come soft. You hard in the carnal, in the natural. But when it comes to a spiritual fight, you ain't got nothing in you. But I came tonight to, to, today to pour into somebody. I came to pour into you. Say, he's pouring in. He's pouring in. That the enemy is fighting you for is your identity. <laughs> He's fighting you to keep you from knowing who you really are in God. And he'll have you posing as an imposter in everything that you do. Now, you'll call yourself a drunk. You'll call yourself a drug addict. you call, hey, that's why I don't agree with what they say in AA. Because I'm not going to get up and say, I'm a drug addict. 
ready. I'm going to recover this up. I'm going to deliver whatever God can do. I'm going to say that's the good news. But what he is fighting you for is to keep your identity here. I wish I had some help. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me prove it to you. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you? I'm going to say it to somebody. Can I prove it? That he's after your identity. Listen to what I'm telling you. The Bible says that you are, here's, here's how God sees you. You are a royal priesthood. Uh, high, high five somebody right there on that. You are a royal priesthood. And, and, and a holy people. He said, call out the darkness to show forth the praises of God. I'm going to let you digest that for a minute. In other words, God said, you didn't even know who you was. When you was getting high, he said, that's not who you was. When you was drinking, that's not who you was. When you was coming, that's not who you was. He said, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He said, I call you out of darkness to show forth the praise of God. For about 30 seconds, I want you to get on your feet and show forth the praise of God in this house. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Because I'm laying out. I'm praising God. The blessing will come down. Come on, praise him. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on, somebody. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Why your identity? What you don't understand is from your identity, everything else flows. As a Christian, we don't live, watch this y'all, from our identity. <laughs> we don't live from our identity, hallelujah. But we live for our identity. I wish I had some help in here. So you need to understand that we're living because we know who we are. And when you find out who you are, hallelujah, the devil knows he doesn't stand a chance. In our text, we find a fight. Hallelujah. This was an intense battle. Somebody said an intense battle. Intense battle. Jacob, the Bible says, was left alone. Watch this. He was by himself. But he was not by himself at first, he had his wives, he had 11 sons, he had servants, he had property, but then something happened where he decided, I'm going to send everything away. And he was left alone. Somebody said left alone. What you don't understand is when things began to be stripped away from you, what God is doing is positioning you for a breakthrough. What he'll do is he'll begin to take everything away from around you and he'll get you in a place where you by yourself. Have anybody ever felt like they was by themselves? I stopped by the tell you. <laughs> when God takes you away <laughs> and when he take her away <laughs> and when he take them away <laughs> Your family members. Oh, yeah. 
they, they fight you like you on the street. Uh, yeah. Now, y'all need to grow up in the Browns uh, uh, household. If you grew up in my household, this is the cost of Kool-Aid is blood. Uh, uh-huh. I, I, I got three scars on my body from family. Are you listening to me? The one I have here on the side of my eye. <laughs> my mother set a cup of Kool-Aid in the, in the refrigerator and went out. Me and my sister ran behind and said, Mama, can we have, can we have the Kool-Aid? <laughs> yeah, go have the Kool-Aid. We both ran back to the kitchen and grabbed the Kool-Aid. We started wrestling over it. We dumped it on the floor. My sister took the Kool-Aid jar and cracked me upside the head with it. Y'all act like I'm the only one that's got somebody in your family that'll fight. Right. This is what this young man was born into. He was a twin and the Bible says that when he came out the womb, he had a hope to his brother's heel. <laughs> He had about a heel when he came out because they were struggling in the womb, was told what they was going to be born into. And, and, and when he was born, the brother was Harry, and they called him Esau, and because he had a home to his land, they called him supplanter or heel catcher. The word supplanter simply means to take somebody's place. There's some folk in your circle. Mm, I got a preach to you right here. There's some folk in your household. They sit around and they watch you. And they want what you have. Even though what you have really ain't that much at all. They want what you have, but they don't want to go through the hell you went through to get it. There's some, all y'all can say, that's somebody here. There's some folk. They watch what you drive. They watch what you wear.
And he tells the angel, he said, listen, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Listen to me. He said, I'm not. That's your shout moment. Y'all listen. I don't care what part of God you got right now. Tell your neighbor, hold on to the part you got. Uh, 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 uh. Hold on to the part of God you have. I don't care what people say. I don't care how they look at you. Hold on to your peace. Hold on to the peace of God that you have because the peace that you have will be enough to bless you. He grabbed the whole to the angel. He grabbed the whole to the angel that began to rest. But they wouldn't rest with about his money. They wouldn't rest with about his wealth. They was wrestling over change. It was time for him to become somebody else. The reason why you have been in an intense battle that you're in, family, is because you're changing into somebody else. There's three things I need to tell you real quick and we're going to get out of here. Three things. Somebody say three things. Hallelujah. That I need to tell you. And we're going to get out of here. Brother, we're going to let the spirit have his way. Is that all right with you? I, I, I will call you on up and up. <laughs> he was struggling with his identity. He had been called a liar, a trickster. He had been labeled by society. Has anybody been wearing a label? Hallelujah. But there was a time of change that was coming. He wrestled for change. Watch this, y'all. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone be in Christ Jesus, behold, they are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I need about five of y'all who are changing up in here. To get on your feet for a minute. You want to take off right here. Get on your feet and begin to praise God. For the change that's happened in your life. Can I tell you what happened in the fight? While they were fighting, I feel my help right here. While they were fighting, thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, While I was fighting, while the angel in Jacob was fighting, the Bible declared, <laughs> but the angel touched his hip. And his hip jumped out of the socket. I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, what's significant about this? And the Lord said to me, he said, tell the people that some of the things that I'm going to bring you out of, it's going to hurt. Some of the people that I pull away from you, it's going to hurt. Some of the people that walk out on you, it's going to hurt. Some of the things uh, that you lose, uh, it's going to hurt. Uh, but I hear God say, uh, your change costs something. Uh, hey, hallelujah. Uh, he said, if you got to limp uh, out of the relationship, uh, limp out of it. Uh, if you got to limp uh, to get your peace back, uh, limp into it. Uh, if you got to limp uh, to get your joy back, uh, limp into it. Uh, you come out, but you come out.